Okay, I see what's the matter, my mother says. She turns to me and smiles. Augustine, hand me that box, would you? Her long, frosted beige nail points to the box of Kotex maxi pads on the floor next to the toilet bowl. I grab the box and hand it to her. She takes two pads from the box and sets it on the floor at her feet. I notice that the box is reflected in the side of her shoe like a small TV. Carefully, she peels the paper strip off the back of one of the pads and slides it through the neck of her dress, placing it on top of her left shoulder. She smooths the silk over the pad and puts another one on the right side. She stands back. What do you think of that, she says. She is delighted with herself. It's as if she's drawn a picture and placed it on her own internal refrigerator door. Neat, I say. You have a very creative mother, she says. Instant shoulder pads. The blow dryer continues to tick like a clock, counting down the seconds. Hot things do that. Sometimes when my father or mother comes home, I will go down and stand near the hood of the car to listen to it tick, moving my face in close to feel the heat. Are you coming upstairs with me? She says. She takes her cigarette from the clamshell ashtray on the back of the toilet. My mother loves frozen baked stuffed clams, and she saves the shells to use as ashtrays, stashing them around the house. I am fixated on the dryer. The vent holes on the side have hairs stuck in them, small hairs and white lint. What is lint? How does it find hair dryers and navels? I'm coming. Turn off the light, she says as she walks away, creating a small whoosh that smells sweet and chemical. It makes me sad because it's the smell she makes when she's leaving. Okay, I say. The orange light from the dehumidifier that sits next to the wicker laundry hamper is looking at me, and I look back at it. Normally, it would terrify me, but because my mother is here, it's okay. Except she is walking fast, has already walked halfway across the family room floor, is almost at the fireplace, will be turning around the corner and heading up the stairs, and then I will be alone in the dark bathroom with the dehumidifier eye. So I run. I run after her, certain that something is following me, chasing me, just about to catch me. I run past my mother, running up the stairs, using my legs and my hands, charging ahead on all fours. I make it to the top and look down at her. She climbs the stairs slowly, deliberately, reminding me of an actress on the way to the stage to accept her Academy Award. Her eyes are trained on me, her smile all mine. You run up those stairs just like Cream. Cream is our dog, and we both love her. She's not my father's dog or my older brother's. She's most of all not my older brother's, since he's 16, seven years older than I, and he lives with roommates in Sunderland a few miles away. He dropped out of high school because he said he was too smart to go, and he hates our parents, and he says he can't stand to be here, and they say they can't control him, that he's out of control, and so I almost never see him. So cream doesn't belong to him at all. She is mine and my mother's. She loves us most, and we love her. We share her. I am just like cream, the golden retriever my mother loves.